I am Anil Kumar. In this video, I will discuss seven questions from previous test papers on Pascal's triangle. The Pascal's triangle, I hope you remember, is something like this, where the numbers are arranged like shown here. Sum of two numbers give rise to the third number, or a number in a Pascal's triangle could be written as sum of previous two numbers as 4 is sum of 1 and 3, 6 is sum of 3 and 3. So likewise, we can extend a pattern to get Pascal's triangle. Based on this, let us discuss a few questions. Question number one here is, determine the sum of the terms in the 19th row of Pascal's triangle. You can always pause the video, copy these questions, try them out and then look into my suggestions. So let's answer this one. Determine the sum of terms in the 19th row of Pascal's triangle. Now, when we say 19th row, it means the value of n is equal to 19 minus 1, which is 18. That is very important. Value of n is 18. And sum of all the numbers in a row is 2 to the power of n right? Since n is 18, we have to look for 2 to the power of 18, right? So that becomes the answer for us. So at times, students might do a mistake of writing 19 there. That will be wrong. So 2 to the power of 18 is equal to this number, which is 262144. So that becomes the answer for question number one right question number two determine the value of n if sum of the terms in the row of pascal's triangle is three two seven six eight so we'll again use the same formula which is two to the power of n is equal to three two seven six eight now one way of course is that keep on dividing this by two and see how many times will to get into this, right? The other way is that you could use log. So if I take log on both the sides, I get n log 2, 2 is this 2, n log 2 equals to log of this number, 3, 2, 7, 6, 8, right? So n is equal to log of 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 divided by log 2. So we could write here n is equal to log of this number 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 divided by log of 2, right? So let's calculate this answer. So we have log of 3, 2, 6, I mean, sorry, uh, log of 3, 2, 7, 6, 8, 7, 6, 8 divided by log 2, which is equal to 15. So, so the answer here is 15. So determine the value of n. We are not asking for rho, okay? n is 15. So the answer for question number 2 is 15. Let me write down answer for 1 is uh, 262144. Next question here is, determine the sum of squares in the sixth row of Pascal's triangle. Now this is also from property of Pascal's triangle. Sum of squares of nth row, the formula is sum of squares of nth row is actually equals to uh, C2N N, right? So the term number is T2N N, correct? Now here, if N is 6, what is R equals to? I mean, what is N equals to? The sum of squares of 6th row, that means row is given to us as 6. So in that case, N is equals to 5, correct? And therefore, this answer should be C, 10, 5, correct? 
that becomes the answer you can again use the calculator and find this answer so 10 combination 5 equals to 252 so the answer for you is 252 or another option is that you can build the Pascal's triangle and add the squares so that is also possible question number four here is do the value of t1920 exist in Pascal's triangle explain well the answer is no it does not exist since in Pascal's triangle you actually go from what to what you go from t whatever I mean n let me write t n 0 to t n n right or you can that is what it is the number here cannot be greater than the previous number so in t n r r has to be less than or equal to n that is the reason right so we could go maximum till 19 t 19 19 correct so that is the reason why that value will not exist in Pascal's triangle question number five write t2 and r as difference of two numbers okay so this is what you do write t2 and r as difference of two numbers you can pause the video copy these questions and then look into my situation so there's something wrong and so i'll write this as a and this as b okay so t2 and r as difference of two numbers now how could you do this well we can use a strategy since we want difference that means uh, let's say if we have t 2 and r as a number here then the number next to this will be t 2 n r plus 1 correct and if you add them what will you get the next number in the next row will be what so if you add them here you get t 2 n plus 1 r plus 1 you get an idea correct we can actually rearrange and then write as a difference so from here we know that t 2 n plus 1 r plus 1 is equal to some of these two which is t 2 n r plus t 2 n r plus 1 now if I have to write t 2 and r as a difference that means this as a difference I'll take this on the left side correct so I can write down my answer as let me write down here t 2 n r is equal to this term which is t 2 n plus 1 r plus 1 minus that term t 2 n r plus one you get an idea right so that is how you can write this as a difference right important thing is you'd write as a difference not sum correct question number 5b is to use this property find the missing numbers using Pascal's method so we are given four numbers here and these are the places which we have to fill in now how to do it let's start from here so this number is addition of the previous two let's add them so we get 3003 plus 2112 equals to 5115 so that number should be 5115 okay now to get here we have to take away 825 from 2112 right so let's write on 2112 take away 825 is equal to 1287 so we get 1287 and now we can move left so now we'll have 3003 take away 1287 that gives us 1716 right so now let's find this number which will be 825 825 take away 495 495 which is equal to 330 
See, we are using this difference formula, getting back our numbers, which were in the previous rows. Now here again, we'll use this difference formula. So we are doing this minus that. That means this minus that to get this number, right? 1287 take away 495 equals to 792. And now we can find this number 1716 take away 792 equals to 924. So that is how you could actually solve this question, right? So I hope it is absolutely clear. Now let's see the next question, question number six. The first six rows, first six terms of a row of Pascal's triangle are shown below. Find the six terms of the previous row. That means before, right? Okay. Now before this, you know, one, so that means triangle number one will be definitely there, right? So, so we could begin with one itself. Now one, next will be what? So uh, next will be, because sum of one and that next number is going to give us 16, right? So to get the next number, I have to take away one from 16. Perfect. Then I get the next number. So that should be 15, right? So we'll get 15 as my next number. Now here, I have to take away 15 from 120 to get the next number. So it has to be 105. And similarly, we'll continue. So we'll take away this number from that, which is 560, take away 105. That gives us 455. Right? And now we are going to take away uh, 455 from 1820. So 1820 take away 455, it gives us 1365. And now we'll take away 1365 from 4368. 4368 take away 1365 gives us 3003. Right? So like this, we can actually get the series from the previous row, correct? Now let's move on and do two more questions. Now these are based on the routes. So find the total number of paths from A to R, that means from here to R, right? From A to R. So I've written my name Anil Kumar here and you define total number of ways in which you can move from A to R in these two ways. So this is like a circuit diagram or a network and here we have arranged the name in an order. You can always pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions, right? So as we go in Pascal's triangle sideways, always one. So we begin with one. So this is one, one and one here. On the other side also we'll have one, one and one. Now, if you move inwards, you have to combine the previous two terms. So here, to come to this i, we'll add 1 and 1, so we'll get 2 here. Here, we'll get 2 plus 1, which is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. Now, for this position, 2 plus 1 is 3. For this position, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10 here. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20. Now if you move to these two places, it is 20 on this side and 20 on this side. For R, 20, 20 add up and you get 40. Correct? So that is how you get your answer. So in this case, the total number of routes are 40. Now let's do this one. Now here, uh, let me write down the condition that you can only move right you cannot come return, right? So you can only move forward. Forward movement. Right? For, not backwards. Up is allowed and down is also allowed, right? But backward is not allowed. So you can't come back. So reverse is not allowed. Now you find path from A to R. 
So we'll follow the same pattern, but sometimes becomes tricky. Now let's look at the starting point A. So from, from A to K, there's only one way you can go. Similarly, for A to N, there's only one way you can go, right? So going forward. But to P, we can go from A to P, that is one. The second is, this is one. The second is, you can follow this path. Do you see that? So there are two ways of reaching P. Perfect. How about this position? To come to this position, we can add 1 and 2, so get 3. Correct? Now, for you, we can again add 1 and 2, just as we did here, and get to this position. So there are three ways of reaching U. Now, if these two are there, so from here to reach to A, there are 2 and 3. So these two will lead to a right so that means 2 plus 3 5 there are five ways of reaching a from p now next we can take we know these two right so we can get the value of l now 5 plus 3 is 8 so this is 8 for us okay let's get the value of m now how many ways to reach at m Remember, there's a path going like this also. So this is 1 here. So 1 plus, we could come straight from here. So that is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. And then 5. So there are 9 ways of reaching this position. Let me write 9 here. Correct? So, so 9 ways, 5 ways, 8 ways. We have to reach R. So you can reach R from M, from A, from L and also from I, correct? So we have to add 9 plus 5 plus 8 and this 3 also, correct? So these are the total number of ways to reach R. How many are they? 9 plus 3 is 12, 17 and 8, 25. So we have 25 ways of reaching from A to R in this particular case. That brings us to the end of this session of on Pascal's triangle. I hope you find it interesting and useful. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe, that would be great for me. Thank you and all the best.